So my name is Luke Bernard, and pretty much 12 years ago, I tried making the first Holocaust video game. I did, and <clears throat> so I announced it pretty much. The New York Time, Times picked it up, and the first thing they wrote about it was basically no game about Nazis for Nintendo. Pretty much, you know, trying to get some kind of snazzy headline in there. And it kind of started taking off, you know, lots of uh, newspapers were talking about it. First video game about the Holocaust on Nintendo, what, what the F, pretty much. And I basically got half a lot of positive feedback and half the press pretty much trying to destroy me nonstop on this thing. So, and then there's a statement that by the Anti-Defamation League, not a bad one, but which was a bit like, hey, we believe, you know, uh, there should be new forms of education. We haven't seen it, that kind of thing. I tried reaching out to the Anti-Defamation League. They didn't respond to me, of course. And so pretty much, you know, I was working on that game and it kind of destroyed me because I was like, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe, you know, maybe this isn't the right thing. So I stopped doing it basically. For like you know the past decade i did even sony at one point they what they came to me and like we think you should make this game and i was like i don't know if i'm ready pretty much because you know the whole traumatic experience from 12 years ago pretty much but then um everything changed last year so last year i started getting lots of invitations to talk at universities all those kind of things and when i was talking to universities kind of the people had organized it you know, he started talking to me in private and saying, hey, you really need to do this game pretty much. This is very important that you do this. So I pretty much decided to work on the game again as of last year. I did. I even, you know, hit up Victoria pretty much to ask if she could help me with some things, this and that. And then I managed to put together a team. Uh, well, thanks to Victoria, pretty much a really good team. And where everything changed is pretty much, you know, very different game it was. 12 years ago, pretty much. And again, kind of ahead of its time. Because now I've noticed, you know, so many people trying to do Holocaust video games, which is great. But 12 years ago, you know, everyone thought you've lost your damn mind, pretty much. So started working on, on the game again last year. And what changed everything is when Joan Salter basically joined on board. And Joan is a Holocaust survivor and also a fantastic writer. So at first she's just meant to be an advisor, but the more I was kind of working on everything with her, I was like, you're really good. Why don't you just write this game, pretty much? So she started writing the game, you know, saying, you know, what direction we should go in and all that. And it's basically the story of a Polish Jewish family in France during the Veldiv Roundup, pretty much. And one thing which I've noticed was well, in, in terms of film anything, you know, in terms of the Holocaust, it's always, you've always got to have that thing about, you know, there being some saviors or some happy ending, you know, even Schindler's List kind of has a happy ending, right? But the hard cold facts are, there was no happy ending for, the, for these people, even the people that survived pretty much. And I felt like we kind of like, you know, sanitizing the Holocaust pretty much, making it appear, you know, oh, look, there's some good things. Look, all some people survived, all those kind of things. And also, we mostly like to focus on Germany. Oh, Nazis bad, you know, these things. Of course, Nazis were bad, right? But we, we're always forgetting about France, <laughs> who, in my opinion, are just as guilty as the Germans. And we're even forgetting about the UK that only allowed 10,000 kids. 1.5 million children died, 10,000 kids weren't allowed in the UK. You know, so, so I, I've, I felt like we can't sanitize the Holocaust and only wanted to talk about all the good things that people did rather than kind of facing the truth. So for the game, pretty much the way Joan wrote it, she took all real things which have happened pretty much. Of course, the family is fictional, but everything inside the game, every story is based in truth. It is pretty much some things which are inspired by her family, you know, what her family went through and things like that. And other things, you know, inspired by what, she, you know, survivors that she'd interviewed and all those things. So that's what we're doing with the light in the darkness, pretty much, is making a video game and also a commercial video game, but not one that's sold too. Because that's also another thing. So pretty much last year when I, I started it again, pretty much, there was um, financing, like a lot of you guys talk about financing. So people wanted to finance it, like corporations, those kind of things, but they wanted to make their money back. And I was like, 
I don't want this to be paid. I want this to be free and out on PlayStation pretty much because that's what I do usually is just PlayStation games, right? Free because I want as many people as possible to download this, play this and actually get curious about the Holocaust and actually be able to open up a conversation again about everything. So it's very important to me for it not to be paid. And also me personally, I didn't want to make money off the Holocaust, if you know me myself. So that's one about which we're really going is basically it's going to be a free game on PlayStation, which we hope to release it like around next January, pretty much next year. But again, making it free. And I think what, um, what I love personally about console compared to say doing on PC or apps and all those kinds of things is that people can kind of sit down and they kind of like, um, you know, they're focused, they are. It's, it's like going to a movie theatre, right? You can't sit down and you're focused on the film. You are. So that's why I like kind of console platform very much. So that's why, even if it's the first kind of commercial game which deals about the victims of the Holocaust, because you'll be playing as a family, you will, and the ending, there's no happy ending. <laughs> you know, I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but you can imagine very much. So that's kind of the direction which, you know, went in for this game. It's been kind of, you know, been trying to get this made for 12 years. Finding it, finally now people actually are open to it. But it's also been a very interesting thing which I noticed too, is that universities have been super supportive of this project they have. But um, most museums, apart from, uh, I actually talked to Ghetto Fighters Museum pretty much, but the only museum which has actually been kind of really supportive or willing to talk has been the Ghetto Fighters Museum, or all other museums, including the LA one right next to me, right, have been very much like, oh, stay away. I don't want to talk to you, go away kind of thing. And I think that's interesting. It's interesting, I don't know what it is exactly, but you know, that, that fear of video games, that fear pretty much, oh, it's a video game, you know, this could be bad, what, what could it be kind of thing. And I think, you know, these museums and all these places have to adapt because the reality is, there's a rise of anti-Semitism, there's a rise of kind of Holocaust denial, there's a rise of everything, right? And with the museum, right, you actually have to go, you already kind of have to acknowledge the Holocaust, so you actually go to the museum, you know, you, know, you don't really get Holocaust deniers going there. But with a video game that's free, even the people that maybe might be like, I hate Jews, right? They're still going to download it. And then they download it, and then they play it, and then they might actually start sympathizing a bit and actually might, might start thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't be such a Nazi. You know, so it, it's all these kind of little things where I do believe I, what I kind of want this game to do in terms of a commercial kind of point out on PlayStation, you know, you know, is to kind of break down the barriers of, you know, this fear of making Holocaust games on the victims, you know, because it's kind of like in film now, you know, you can always do Holocaust films, you can now, but in games it's so still so taboo for some odd reason when it kind of... Uh, it shouldn't be. There's so many World War II games out there, right? But none of them really mention the Holocaust. It's, it's kind of insane. It's, it's kind of like forgetting our history or forgetting the most important part of World War II, pretty much. So I know I'm rambling on and on kind of <laughs> all these things. I'm, I don't do good when you just talk alone, um, pretty much. But that's kind of goal of this game, which I've been trying you know, to get made for 12 years. And so basically right now I'm self-funding it. I am myself. And, you know, we even formed like a non-profit to kind of also get the game out as much as possible and also make more games pretty much in terms of genocide and all those kinds of things. I honestly do believe this is, might be controversial, but I do believe this is the future of our Holocaust education in interactive. I, I do believe that because we are losing right now we are losing online, you know, to, to the anti-Semitism, to the genocide denial, we're losing online very much. And that's why I think at, at all the games which I've seen presented today, or even the one uh, about basically, the, you know, the, um, the generational trauma pretty much, I think are so fucking important they are. And that's how come I really, you know, it's really great to see all these things being done because I do believe this is the future because if we just let, you know, pretty much things continue the old way, right? It's just gonna get worse and worse. That's when we have to find new ways to basically educate, new ways to put out. And education is kind of like, you know, you know, kids in schools, kind of, it's hard to get their attention. They're like, oh my God, I'm in school, you know, or this kind of thing. But you know, 
compared to a game like many have said, right? You give them a game, they're like, well, this isn't a book, so I'm certainly going to be interested in it. But also another thing, if you have all these games out, right, and they're either free or either just look really cool, right, is people kind of playing them kind of on their own rather than forcing them to. And that actually makes them get curious about all these things and look into everything more. And so that's the thing, pretty much. I believe museums should exist. I absolutely do. But I believe pretty much these games can get people interested in the Holocaust again to actually educate themselves more.